Welcome back to my channel. Last episode I showed you how to prep the plaster mold for fiberglass. In this episode I'll be showing you how to lay up, resin, remove the plaster, and shape and finish the fiberglass socket. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is lay out the reinforcing material. I've had really good luck using kid socks as reinforcing material for the socket. When selecting which socks to use, you want to make sure to use 100% cotton or a 70-30 blend sock so there's less of a chance of reaction between the resin and the reinforcing material. I usually have the first sock be something fun, usually one that has a monster or a cool pattern on it, or something so that the inside of the socket is a little more interesting to look at. I find that using five layers of socks makes a socket that's strong enough for most applications. So for this socket, the socks I'll be using for the layup are a monster sock, a black one, followed by a yellow one, and then two black socks for the outer layers. So let's lay up the first sock. Stretch it over the mold, inside out, so the character's facing the right way, and there aren't any wrinkles. I usually secure it to the stick with a zip tie to make sure that it stays tight and wrinkle free. Now that that's done, let's start with the resin. Start by gloving up. I use double or triple gloves, so when your gloves get too sticky, you can just peel off the outer layer and you still have another set to keep you from getting resin on your hands. For pouring and mixing up the resin, I use these polypropylene measuring cups. The resin doesn't stick to these cups and you're able to reuse them several times. All that you have to do is let the resin fully cure and then flex the cup a little bit. The resin just pops right out, usually in one or two pieces. And as long as you're using the same type of resin, you can just measure up the next batch right then. There are a lot of options out there for resin, but if you're going to be using what's available locally at the big box stores, you'll be using Bondo brand fiberglass resin. I've had really good luck with this product. The resin uses organic hydrogen peroxide as the catalyst. You mix the resin by weight, usually 10 drops of catalyst per one ounce of resin, although that can vary depending on ambient temperature. If the air temperature is between 50 and 70 degrees, I'll mix up to 12 drops of catalyst per one ounce of resin. It's pretty hot today, so I'm only going to mix nine drops per ounce. I usually make six ounce batches. It's about all I can successfully get applied within the relatively short working time. The hotter temperature wise it is, or the more drops per ounce you put in, the faster the resin will kick off. So that's something you'll have to figure out for yourself through experience. So mix in the catalyst and stir it well. Be sure to mix all the way to the bottom and all the way to the edges of the container. That being said, let's get going. So start at the top and evenly coat the entire model. Be sure that the entirety of the sock is thoroughly saturated. After you're confident that it's coated well enough, go ahead and don the second sock. Be aware of the toe seam in the alignment of the sock. Try not to spin or twist the sock as you're stretching it over the mold. Remember, the heel of the sock goes towards the back of the hand and the toes align with the plane of the metacarpals. You need to work fast and accurately once you start coating the socket. All the work that you've done up to this point can be ruined if this part goes badly. So continue to lay up the socks and paint on the resin until you either run out of socks or run out of resin. During the filming of this segment, the resin started to go off a bit faster than what it usually does. That happened as a result of a couple different conditions. Filming messed with my timing a bit, and it was hotter temperature-wise that day, so the resin started to gel while I was still building it up. It's important to recognize this when it happens and just stop. Don't chase it. No good will come from that. Just figure that that resin is cooked and just start measuring up another batch of resin. So pour 6 ounces again. This time I'll mix up 7 drops per ounce. That should give me a little bit more working time. Also, use a new chip brush. Figure it's just the cost of the project. Harbor Freight usually has the best prices on 2 inch chip brushes. Check local listings. On the last sock, if you have extra resin, just keep putting the resin on until it starts to gel. Once you're out of socks and resin, let it set for 3 or 4 hours, or overnight if you have the time, to harden and fully cure. Now that the resin is cured, the next thing we have to do is get the plaster out of the socket. I'm going to start by trimming the excess material that's at the wrist and below off with this oscillating cutter. This next part is why it's so important to do all of this while the plaster is still green, so it peels out of the socket easy. Use a screwdriver or whatever tool it takes to pry the plaster out. Once you have a good portion of the plaster out, go ahead and start pulling on the glove and tape. It should come out in a pretty good sized chunk if everything goes well. 
Once the plaster is out, we need to start thinking about what the final shape is going to look like and start laying out what we're going to trim the socket to. For this, I use a piece of chalk to draw the approximate shape on the socket. Next, use the cutter to cut away anything that keeps your hand from fitting into the socket. Until you do this a couple times and have a pretty good idea of what the final socket shape is going to look like, you want to go after this slowly. You don't want to overshoot the cut on the socket. If you do happen to overcut, you can repair and add back, but it's kind of an in-depth process. It's better if you just ease your way into the final shape. Once you can fit your hand into the socket and nothing seems to be biting you, then it's time to turn to the belt sander and start sanding it to its final shape. For this, I'm using a 60 grit zirconium belt for the roughing operation. Be sure to go back and forth between sanding and fitting to get the socket where it fits really good on your residual limb. Trim the back of the wrist so you can move your wrist forward and back and nothing bites you. Now start sanding the outside surface. You have two layers of black socks that you can sand to to get everything to an even level. If you start seeing the yellow layer, stop there and take a step back and add another couple layers of socks to the outside. Remember, you want the socket to be about five layers thick. That's where the strength of the socket comes from. So now that the socket is shaped and sanded and fits your residual limb pretty well, now it's time to figure out what you're going to do with it. Having a good fitting socket is crucial to building a prosthetic device that you'll enjoy using for a long time to come. And depending on what you're going to do with it will determine how you'd go about finishing it. For me, going into this, I had in mind adapting a quarter inch impact driver. Since I lost my hand, it became really difficult for me to use an impact driver and drive screws without stabbing my hand. If there's enough interest, I'd be happy to do a series of build videos on that project. That's where I'm going to end this video. I hope this series helps someone out there make the jump and decide to build a device for themselves. Hit me up if you run into difficulties or have questions about the process. Let me know if you'd like to see the build of my impact driver prosthetic and I'll get started putting that together. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share the videos. And if you have time, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.